broke very precise. The laboratory medicine is still new to eye care. We look at gold standards in terms of precision data, like cholesterol and blood glucose, which were outperforming. It's now available. If you don't get a chance to stop by and see it, I brought a 15 second demo to you. This is real time unedited. The test card goes on. Uh, it's now ready to collect from the tear leg a 40 nanometer tear sample. In less than the next several seconds here, it's going to do an infrared thermometry analysis to the temperature of the specimen, and it's going to run a real time osmolarity reading, and you'll get the output of the LCD screen right there. So, this is my lovely uh, office manager, Linda, at 367. She signed it if it releases, and she's to share it. <laughs> Last but not least, I, I just want to recognize it's great to have data that thought leaders such as Mr. Margaret McDonald, Vince Thompson, have told us for years they've been educating on the essential. Of osmolarity and premium vision. We can now show that directly. We invite you to come by and check it out. Thank you. Well, obviously, I'm a believer. <laughs> that tear film is two to three times more powerful than the implant that I'm putting in. And uh, so I'm, I'm obviously also a believer in a great exam and, and history and everything else that comes along with it. But having uh, a test like this has been very important for us and, and uh, we believe. Thank you for bringing uh, Osmolary back. You're like bringing sexy back. <laughs> um, I mean, we all know the effects of the ocular surface dry eyes are so impactful on um, but it was clunky before, it was difficult, it was not really easy to get. Um, and uh, so thank you for bringing it back in a compact way. My question to you is, can we do further um, point of care tests using this device? Yeah, so one of the first challenges we had two years ago is we were looking to bring it back, as you say, I love that, um, at marketing too, we may have all that. Um, was, do we look at other biomarkers or do we look at solving the osmolarity problem? We saw the opportunity for osmolarity. The first insight was there's such a need out there in premium vision. We've learned from those who've been doing it for years, but the barrier to entry in premium surgery was it wasn't accessible. It created traffic jams, it was cumbersome, it was you know, a big site unit. And we said problem number one to solve small company, we need to get a portable device that lets us put this in the hands of any practice, any protocol. You don't have to change to adapt to it. It fits into what's existing. And then secondarily, absolutely looking at additional biomarkers. But this was first and foremost. If I can add to that, I think osmolarity in and of itself is not necessarily useful where you know you look at the osmolarity and then you end there. It's it's a great kind of alert to look for other causes like Vance was saying. I think it's a wonderful tool to guide the technicians to really kind of flag that chart, flag that patient. This is someone who needs a closer look at their ocular surface because as we know, there's multiple problems that can cause abnormal osmolarity, and it's not an indication of only one disease process, but it could be a multi-dimensional, multi-factorial issue. But I love that it's an easy tool to help us flag those patients that really need a, a kind of a deeper dive into what the underlying cause is. Yeah, it's a, it's a great point. I think people far smarter than me are debating the initial cause of what, what initially breaks down homeostasis, uh, lifestyle, diet, comorbidities. I think from our perspective, the point is we want you to recognize homeostasis has been broken and find the ability to start working back to a healthy level. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.